Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to introduce myself, given I've been, just been introduced. Uh, for some of you, the presentation today may cover some material you are familiar with. For others, it will provide an overview of progress the Australian Government has made with its illegal logging policy. First glitch. If all else fails, press on your name. Before I discuss Australia's approach, I thought I would start by providing some context about the problem of illegal logging. Illegal logging con contributes to environmental degradation and hampers social development by depriving local communities and governments of the benefits of the use of their resource. Environmental and social costs worldwide have been estimated at approximately $60 billion US per annum. Illegally logged timber also undermines well-regulated sustainable industries by undercutting timber products that have been legally harvested. Major consumer countries have, or indeed are putting in place, measures to prevent trade in illegally logged timber products. The United States placed a prohibition on illegally logged timber imports through the Lacey Act Amendment in 2008. As many of you would be aware, the, the European Union are implementing their timber regulations, which prohibit illegally logged timber from being placed on the EU market and require due diligence to be carried out on timber products. The EU timber regulations commenced on 3 March this year. A number of other countries are also developing timber legality verification schemes <coughs> excuse me, to combat illegal logging and meet the import requirements of consumer countries and also to demonstrate the legal origins of their timber products. Indonesia, for example, has introduced a timber legality verification system known as SVLK. These complementary approaches are driving a new international policy framework for combating illegal logging and associated trade. To further understand the Australian position, it's important to understand the origins of forest products that are placed onto the Australian market. Australia is a net importer of forest products. Total imports for forest products in 2011 were estimated to be in excess of $5 billion Australian. Australia imports forest products from a vast array of countries. For example, in 2010, imports of forest products came from around 85 countries. However, the major suppliers of forest products come from just eight countries. Notwithstanding this, the mix of products between those countries is quite different. The map shows by value the top eight countries of origin for forest products imported into Australia. The US, Canada, EU, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam and New Zealand. Key products that Australia imports from these countries include wooden articles, furniture, paper and some pulp. Australia highly values its trade relationships. We have consulted with a number of key trading partners throughout the development of the illegal logging policy. To assist in the fight against illegal logging, the Australian Government made a commitment to introduce legislation to prohibit the importation of illegally logged timber. The Illegal Logging Prohibition Act, which came into force last year, meets that commitment. The Act aims to support international efforts to reduce the harmful environmental, social and economic impacts of illegal logging. To restrict the importation and processing of illegally logged timber into Australia. To provide greater certainty for businesses and consumers that timber products sold in Australia are from legal sources. The Act does this by regulating timber products at the first point of entry onto the Australian market. That is, at the border for imports and at the mill gate for domestic raw logs. Australian importers and processors will be required to seek information from their suppliers 
about the timber they are purchasing and also to minimise the risk of sourcing illegally logged timber. So I said the Act came into, uh, Act came into operation on the 29th of November last year. The high level prohibition for importing or processing illegally logged timber is now in force. The Department is developing regulations that underpin the Act in consultation with stakeholders. The regulations will prescribe, amongst other things, the list of timber regulated products to be regulated and the due diligence process to be followed in placing timber products onto the Australian market. The regulations will be available in late May this year. However, importantly, although the regulations will be available in late May, they do not come into effect until the 30th of November 2014. This time frame will give importers of regulated timber products and domestic processors of raw logs ample time to establish their due diligence systems before the regulations are in force. The Act defines illegally logged as timber harvested in contravention of laws in force in the country of harvest. This definition recognises the sovereign rights of other countries to enforce their own laws. Enforcement of the prohibition of illegally logged timber products will be, will be dependent upon the determination of illegality by the country of harvest or, in the case of Australian raw logs, the state in which harvesting takes place. To undertake a prosecution, the Commonwealth will need to prove that the timber has been illegally logged in the country of harvest. For importers and domestic processors who are already doing the right thing, the next 18 months will be business as usual. There are no other requirements that importers and domestic processors are obliged to meet until commencement of the regulations in late November 2014. The Department has consulted with a range of key stakeholders throughout the development of the Act. These stakeholders include industry associations, private businesses, trading partner governments, civil society and state and territory governments. The regulations are now being developed and the Department is undertaking more detailed consultation, including four full day workshops. The workshops allow for in-depth discussion on specific elements of the regulations, such as the process for due diligence, which timber products will be regulated, and the compliance and enforcement regime. Since December last year, the Department has held three workshops. Just before the workshops, issues papers are circulated to participants to enable a more focused and informed discussion to occur. The fourth and final workshop will be held on the 27th of March in Canberra, and we'll discuss the government's final draft position on the regulations. Some of the feedback that we've received from our stakeholders to date has assisted in the drafting process. Indeed, it's led to significant changes in the draft regulations to date, uh, in particular, the due diligence process. Speaking of due diligence, the due diligence requirements will apply to importers of regulated timber products and domestic processes of Australian raw logs. The aim of the due diligence requirements is to minimise the risk of sourcing illegal timber uh, and putting it onto the Australian market. The due diligence process will include four steps. An information gathering and retention step and also understanding the context in which the transaction is taking place. An information analysis and initial assessment step. Risk assessment and, where necessary, risk mitigation. Under step two, it is proposed that importers and processors will be able to rely on recognised third party legality assurance schemes or country specific guidance to carry out the due diligence. Workshop participants have provided extensive feedback on the proposed due diligence process. Considerable feedback has been focused on recognition of legality assurance systems and country specific guidance under step two. Some stakeholders have contended that the proposed information gathering requirements are too prescriptive. However, others have said they are too narrowly focused. A number of stakeholders have also recommended closer alignment with the EU model where possible. Other issues that the department is considering include recognising our existing trading obligations, 
commitments already made and implementing an efficient, effective and, importantly, manageable regulations package. As you can see from this quick snapshot, the views presented can be quite polarised. They do, however, showcase the diversity that exists within our group of stakeholders. As previously stated, due diligence will need to be undertaken by importers and domestic processors. Under the regulations, regulated timber products will be classified under the Harmonised Commodity Description or coding system, the HS codes. This is an international commodity classification system used by most trading nations for customs purposes. A draft list of timber regulated products, uh, which included timber and timber products, including round logs, sawn timber, solid timber and particle board, pulp and paper and furniture, was provided at the first stakeholder workshop in December last year. Generally, participants accepted the approach taken by the department in producing the list of timber regulated products. However, many participants wanted more products to be regulated than those presented at the workshop. And as you might guess, other participants wanted the list to be narrower. The department is working to harmonise our approach, as I said, with both the, e with the US and uh, in particular with the EU system. The department is also considering a number of exemptions for example, a possible exemption for recycled goods. The fourth workshop, the department will present the government's final draft position on the regulations. Stakeholders will have an opportunity to comment on the department's position during the workshop. An opportunity to comment will close in early April as time will be needed to finalise the drafting and clearance processes for the regulations. Once the regulations are released, Australia will commence the next phase of the process, that is, external outreach in terms of the regulations. The outreach will include extensive education of and consultation with stakeholders and in, uh, with domestic and international stakeholders, and will include initially at least a round of public consultations and information sessions in major capitals within Australia, as well as a series of regional workshops involving a number of our key trading partners as indeed we undertook uh, in uh, June last year. The department will also look to develop educational information such as guidance materials to assist with the compliance with our, with our regulations. Documents will include country specific guidance for importers and state specific guidance for domestic processes. This will provide an overview of what legal timber looks like in a particular jurisdiction. The department will develop these documents in close consultation with its key stakeholders. The outreach activities, as I say, will commence as soon as the, the regs are tabled and will continue right up to the uh, commencement of the regulations in 2014. In summary then, Australia's Illegal Logging Prohibition Act commenced on the 29th of November last year and the high level prohibition is now in force. The regulations that underpin the Act will be available in late May this year. However, and very importantly, the regulations will not commence until late November 2014. The, the Department is also continuing to consult with stakeholders in the drafting of the regulations. So thank you very much for listening today. Uh, more information, including a copy of the Legal Logging Prohibition Act, is available from our website or alternatively, you can contact us through our email address, which is there. Thank you once again.